The best way to teach people critical thinking is to teach them to write. The best way to teach people critical thinking is to teach them to write. They have this guide to writing that's, that, if it isn't on the 434 website, it is definitely on the 430 website. And uh, it steps people through the process of writing. Because what's happened now, it's very hard to teach people to write because it's unbelievably time intensive. And like writing, marking a good essay, that's really easy. Check A. You did everything right. right. Marking a bad essay? Oh my God. The words are wrong, the phrases are wrong, the sentences are wrong, they're not ordered right in the paragraphs, the paragraphs aren't coherent, and the whole thing makes no sense. So trying to tell the person what they did wrong, it's like, well, you did everything wrong. Everything about this essay is wrong. Well. That's not helpful either. You have to find the few little things they did half right, and you have to teach them what they did wrong. It's really expensive. And so what I did with this rubric was try to address that from the production side instead of the grading side. But the best thing you can do is teach people to write, because there's no difference between that and thinking. And one of the things that just blows me away about universities is that no one ever tells students why they should write something. It's like, well, you have to do this assignment. Well, why are you writing? Well, you need the grade. It's like, no, you need to learn to think because thinking makes you act effectively in the world. Thinking makes you win the battles you undertake. And those could be battles for good things. If you can think and speak and write, you are absolutely deadly. Nothing can get in your way. So that's why you learn to write. It's like, well, I can't believe that people aren't just told that. It's, it's, it's like, it's the most powerful weapon you can possibly provide someone with. And I, I mean, I know lots of people who've been staggeringly successful and watched them throughout my life. I mean, those people, you don't want to have an argument with them. They'll just slash you into pieces. And not in a malevolent way. It's like, if you're going to make your point and they're going to make their point, you better have your points organized because otherwise you are going to look like and be an absolute idiot. You are not going to get anywhere. And if you can formulate your arguments coherently and make a presentation, if you can speak to people, if you can lay out a proposal, God, people give you money, they give you opportunities, you have influence. That's what you're at university for. And so that's what you do. So you, that's, you're, in, you're in English, right? You're, and yeah, in languages anyways. It's like, yeah, te teach people to be articulate because that's the most dangerous thing you can possibly be. So, and that's motivating if people know that. It's like, well, why are you learning to write? Because you're, here's your sword, here's your M16, right? Here's your bulletproof vest. Like, you learn how to use them. But, ah, it's just, it's an endless mystery to me why that isn't made self-evident. So that's the sort of thing that can drive you mad trying to sort out. It's like people are, there's a, there's a conspiracy to bring people into the education system to make them weaker. So I guess that keeps the competition down. Maybe that's one way of thinking about it. If your students are stupid, they're not going to challenge you.